if we enjoy drawing architecture, then we're probably attracted to grand architecture that's full of magnificent architectural detailing and decoration. And we can be really eager to get stuck into drawing it. And I wouldn't want to stop you. But can I suggest that before we get straight into the architectural detail, we need to learn to see the underlying structure of the building that the detail sits on top of. Because I often see detail, because I often see drawings with a lot of architectural detail, which has obviously been drawn with great interest and enthusiasm. But the basic building shapes that the detail sits on is not quite right and it makes the whole drawing look not quite right and it makes it often impossible to line up the detail the way it needs to line up with other parts of the drawing for the whole scene to really make sense. Before we start to add the pediments and the cornices and the columns and the domes, the arches and the sculptures, the entablatures, the bits that protrude out, we need to have a firm grasp of what the basic simplest shape of the building is and then how that basic shape has been changed before we get to the detail that sits on the top of it. We are talking about internal spaces that are also made up of basic shapes. And if we're going to add decoration to those, we need to understand what's happening with the basic shapes themselves. And it doesn't really matter what style of drawing we're doing, whether they're fast gestural drawings or more considered more detailed studies, we need the basic shape of our building to be accurate. So I want to quickly look at a number of examples to work out what is the basic shape that it's most helpful to identify before we start to add details. This is so important. I intend to make a number of videos on it using increasingly more complex examples. But this one is starting with buildings which while the building themselves may not be particularly simple, in fact there's a lot of decoration on some of them, the basic shapes that underlie the architecture are relatively simple. It's such a shame to go to all this trouble to put all this detail onto our drawings if the basic building that they sit on is looking wonky. So let's start with our first example. What does it mean to visualize the basic shapes? Well, in this example, obviously the basic shape is a box. Something like this. The other thing I try and do is when I have a shape such as this bay window coming out, I try to imagine what it looks like looking straight down on it to see a floor plan of this shape. It's going to be something such as this. It's really quite a shallow projection from the wall. And by visualizing all of this, before I try and draw the actual bay window attached to the wall, it gives me a stronger sense of the proportions and how far I want to have it coming out. What does visualizing the basic shape mean? With a building such as this, where it looks like a very complex building, and in lots of ways it is in terms of the detail. But if we visualize the basic shape of this end tower, it's really quite simple. It really is a box. We know that it continues down here at some point. What I then notice is that there are two projections on each side. And I can either think of these as two very thin boxes stuck onto each edge, or I can think of it as a dent taken out of the center. And so this is the simple shape I'm visualizing before I start to put the details. And then when I have these perspective lines going across, then it becomes quite simple just to make the slight adjustment for the indent. And then I can add all of the details that I find within each of these spaces. And then there's another box that joins on to this one. Now in terms of the roof line, I'm looking at this as a rectangular pyramid with the top cut off. And again, visualizing this shape as a simple shape before I start to put any of the decorative details on is useful. And even with this dormer window here, and I see it's basically a wedge sitting on the front of the roof. Seeing these basic shapes and capturing the perspective just with these basic shapes means that when I put the detail on, the whole building, the basic form and the detail will all fit within the perspective framework 
of this view. Here we have another very ornate French building, part of the Musée du Louvre. But in terms of its basic form, it's quite a simple shape. We have this box, but the front of the box again has a narrow box attached. And then within this box, these windows are set back, so they end up being level with the windows on this wall. So it's understanding what goes in, what comes out, and what lines up with what in the facade. If I think of this roof again, I have a pyramid with the top cut off. And then we have our truncated pyramid on top. So our basic shape is still relatively simple. Sometimes we see buildings shaped like this. Whenever I see buildings with multiple walls angled, the first thing I do is work out how many walls are we looking at in the whole building. And I can see one, two, three walls here. I can also tell that these two walls we're seeing edge on. So there's one, two, three, four, five walls. And then there'll be three walls on the other side. So that's eight walls in total. And whenever there's eight walls, that usually means that we have a square with the corners cut diagonally off. And so this is what I visualize before I start to draw. This is the underlying shape of what's in front of me. Sometimes I sit, look at this from more of an angled view and I can actually see four of the walls, not three. The other way I try and appreciate the basic shapes is when I look at roofs such as this lovely Baroque squash dome. What I do is I visualize it as two shapes. I visualize a bottom half that looks something such as this. And then I visualize a top half that sits on such as this. And what this does, it lets me draw these curves just in one direction. And it lets me line up more easily the point where the line goes from concave to convex. Now, of course, I don't draw this line in. I just visualize it. But I visualize that line as, as I get some reference dots to draw that in. And then, of course, on the roof, although this is a, a balustrade, I see it as a, as a solid shape that sits on top. So visualizing the basic shape helps me understand what I'm doing and the shape that I'm placing these decorative elements on. Now this spire is an example of an eight-sided basic shape, but where because of the angle, I can see four of the sides, not just three. And on top, therefore, I have an eight-sided spire that sits within these walls. And then there's, if you like, an eight-sided collar that sits underneath. So here's our basic shape. And then we have these pediments on each of them. And then our spire comes down and joins on in that fashion. But by visualizing our basic eight-sided forms, it helps us understand what's happening and getting the perspective right as each of these points moves around in line with the perspective angles and pattern that this viewpoint creates. This spire is a good example of another point. So clearly, we have a box as the basic shape. And on top of that, we have another platform. And I'm just going to take it up to here. And then we have another box that sits on top. But if I look at it closely, I can see that this, this line aligns here, but it doesn't align with the top. So this third box is actually a smaller box. These ones actually forms one, one box. But if I look at the bottom here, it's easier if I draw the box shape and then I add these decorative elements on top of the box shape. And because I'm drawing this on this box structure, the alignment stays nicely in line. 
and then I can go to this last section knowing that this box is a smaller box sitting on top. And now we have an eight sided base here that this final decorative element sits on. And down here we have these basic shapes of these two cones. Now when I'm looking at this shape, again, I'm thinking of dividing it in two shapes where the curve changes direction. So I'm seeing a basic shape here of a bulbous shape. And then I change the direction where the curve changes direction all the time, making effort to keep it nice and straight on my center line. So by breaking this quite complex spire down into a series of shapes that are stepped up on top of each other, I make it a much simpler process in the end to draw. Now here is another relatively complex architectural structure. But again, what's the basic shape? It's a box. I think it's probably going to go a bit further than that. And then we have these structures on the front. The way I like to think of these is I think of these columns as a continuation of the base and the entablature. And so I think of this whole thing as a box that's stuck on. And then we need to put the columns in, of course. And then their wonderful Corinthian capitals will sit on top there. But by visualizing these as simpler blocky forms, lets me align all of this detail. And of course, even though there is a large overhanging cornice that comes up here, these structures actually continue and become the base for the sculptures that sit on top. And then there's another box that sits on top as well with the sculptures on top. And then into this shape, we pierce it by visualizing it firstly as a box and then these columns and bases and the entablature that comes out, seeing them in perhaps the simplest form we can visualize them helps us get all of our alignments correct before we start to do the details. Let's look at this spire of a former church in Edinburgh. Down the bottom we can see we have a box. Then on top of the box we have this shape, which if we look carefully we can see is going to be one of our eight-sided cylinders or one of our square boxes with the corners cut off. And then on top of that, we see we have another eight-sided. If we look at this one, we can see that these corners actually have a column on them. So they have, if you like, a thin rectangle that sits on them, which causes a little decorative point up here. And then on top of this, there is a rail. And on top of this, we have an eight sided spire. But then we have these decorative columns here. What I like to do here is to again, visualize looking down on our plan. And so what we have basically is a box here. And on that box, we had another smaller box, but the corners have been cut off it. And in the space, where these corners were, these columns now stand. And so understanding this basic shape, particularly as a floor plan, helps me to really work out what I have to draw here. And I'm not thinking of this balustrade piercing. I'm not thinking of these clocks. I'm not thinking of the arch windows. I'm not thinking of this decorative cornice. I'm just trying to visualize the most basic form so that I can get the proportions right when I draw it.
So now I have my octagonal prism sitting on top. And then on each of these corners, I have a column. So by visualizing the basic forms that we have here, it's easier to stack all these things together in what could be quite a tricky combination of elements. Simplify it first, and then add the additional elements onto this simple framework, which we now understand much more clearly. And a rough sketch beforehand can be very helpful in working out how the proportions look particularly without all the decorative elements on them.